Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna start off quick here today. Today I'm gonna be playing this uh, Mono White Legends deck. Which is pretty interesting, this 5 to League. In the hands of... Let's see, who do we got here? CC Caspar. And uh, it looks pretty sweet. We got Ugin at the top end, Ulamog higher than that. So uh, Ulamog at the top end, I guess you could say. And uh, we have three Oriac Champions, three, four Knight of, Knight of the White Orchid, which are great with the uh, eight border posts. Uh, we have 17 lands, but with eight border posts, it's actually more like we have 25 lands, which is a lot for modern. But we do want to be playing uh, four drops like Heliod, Karn, and Thalia's Lancer. And then we have Elspeth, Karn, Eleshnorn, Ugin, and Ulamog. Uh, keep in mind, the cards we can get with Thalia's Lancer are these. Which is a good amount. It's also a, a nice a nice variety here. Um, also, it's we have On Thin Ice in the deck. Two copies of On Thin Ice which is uh, one of the new cards from Modern Horizons. So more Modern Horizons cards seeing play in Modern itself. What up, Chris? Good seeing you, buddy. Always a pleasure. Mastery of the Unseen in the sideboard is super, super interesting. Uh, if you guys remember, this card kind of took over Standard for a while when it was legal. It was just everywhere. And everyone was just manifesting all over. Uh, three Rest in Peace, two Stony Silence. These are the default two mana enchantments that you want if you have a white deck. Two Grand Abolisher, two Tomic. Land cards in graveyards can be the target. So this is actually a nice uh, a nice foil for uh, Renin Six. And one Worship, one Ghost Quarter, one Liquid Metal Coating, and one Mycosynth Lattice. Keep in mind you can get the Liquid Metal Coating and the Lattice with the Karn in the deck. So, we're gonna give this one a shot, see how it goes. And in a perfect world, we will be able to uh, have our Q fire. We'll get caught up in the Q fire. I'm gonna do already, look at that. That was, that was efficient. Well, I want to play first, except for I don't have the choice, but if I did, I would. Is this hand good enough? I mean, we've got turn one planes, turn two border post planes, and then turn three we can play knight. I think this hand's actually fine. It's two lands, technically. And then we just hope that they're not, I mean, like, my biggest problem is that modern is an unfair format, right? And this is the, the fairest of fair decks. Is that Chalice of Chalice on Zero? Chalice on Zero is interesting. <laughs> I don't know what that was. That I don't understand that. And they go Chalice on One. I don't understand this. Are there that many decks in the in the format where Chalice of One is like good? I don't understand. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm very confused. I feel like I'm having a real problem with what's happening right now. I'm having a confusion. I should concede now. Chalice on zero. Oh buddy. I just wanted to have some good clean fun. And then you come up in here with the with the chalices. Are you ready for are you ready for a uh a sweet thought not wow, that was aggressive. Chalice on zero, dismember R2-2. Two two. I don't understand anything. So we, uh, boy, 
Uh, oh, boy. The only thing we can do here is actually play Oriak Champion and play a Border Post. Unfortunately, because you have to pay one for this, it, you don't really, it breaks even. But the good thing about something like Oriak Champion is that uh, when it's bad, it's an easy card to sideboard out, but when it's good, like, it's a, just a nice, it's, it's just unbelievably good. And it still has this, like, whenever you, whenever another, another creature enters the battlefield, gain a life. So it's like, it's not even, it's never dead, dead. <sighs> we just happen to have two border posts, and they just happen to play a card. Liquid metal coating. I think we're just dead now. Well, this went downhill fast. I don't think we can beat that. I'm going to go to the next game. Karn's a hell of a thing. Okay, well, Stony Silence. Tomek seems decent because if they're going to try to hit our lands with Karn. Mastery is not super exciting. Rest in peace. Meh. I'll take out one border post to be quite honest. It's a yikes for me, dog. Frank Motes. I accept this term. I'll keep this hand. Man, and, and and they had Chalice on zero. God, that's not the game you want to lose. Here comes a dismember. Watch their life total go to 16. You ready? No. Surprise. This is weird that with like essentially 25 mana sources, we're still like not hitting them that consistently. I mean, of course, if we draw our own Stony Silence, it's rough on our border posts, but it's, I, I have to assume it's worse for the Tron deck. Maybe not, but it's better than Oriok Champion. I mean, I'll give you whatever you got here. Sure. Yep. Well, that's fascinating. At least we get to kill the Karn and keep our...
<laughs> yep. I'm not sure if I'm sold on the border posts. Like, because it doesn't really ramp you unless you also have a knight. Mm -hmm. uh, target of spell on opponent controls. Oh, that makes Ant the Knights very, very good. Oh, no attacks here. Interesting. So now we have the option of, I think there's Thalia's Lancering here. This guy's not really doing anything. I'd rather use all five mana than just use one mana here. And we still get to attack for two. This guy doesn't have reach, right? I should know this. We got five mana. Uh, our own Karn seems pretty good. So as long as they don't draw Thought Not Seer or mine. Does not look like either. Sure. How much mana is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, seven, eight, nine. We could go second Thalia's Lancer into Ulamog. That seems pretty good. Oh wait, ten. Can we Ulamog here? Seven, eight, nine, yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, Ulmog's good. You just hard cast the Ulmog, I guess. Nykthos is a heck of a drug. All right, so we're Nykthosing into Ulmog. Sure. Why not? All right. Sometimes that's all you got to do. You just uh, grab that Nykthos. Cast that Ulmog. Hunter, no, down. Hold on. Okay. Um, no, I think they're fine in this deck. I mean, I, as long as you're not going up against Karn, I think they're totally fine because they're adding to Nick. They're adding to both Nykthos, uh, and they're letting you Knight of the White Orchid. Do you play paper EDH? Uh, I don't play much. I don't play EDH on paper or online. I'm not a huge commander fan. I mean, I don't mind it. I don't dislike the format. I'm just not. Um, it's just I'm not a. It's not a, a format I play a ton of. Thank you. Oh, Nifty Chris, 15 months. That's so long. Thank you so much, buddy. You're wonderful. You're a wonderful soul. I would kiss your beautiful bald head if I could. In fact, that's all I want to do right now. Uh, put this guy out. Okay. No, oh, that's a five. I'm okay with that. The blue thing was shaking a bunch, and I wanted to go. Oh, that's good. I it's it's almost like I unintentionally pressured you into into resubbing there. That was good. Way to go. Could you splash green for Karametra considering the amount of legendary creatures you play? Uh, does Karametra double green or single green? Or is it the white green one? It's the white green one, isn't it? 
walking brolista. So now if we play this guy, their ghost quarters are not that good. I didn't know Mike was bald? Chris, what are you talking about? Who's Mike? I don't get I don't even get that joke. Could you spot uh green W three? Oh yeah, the five mana Karametra. What does that do though? Blast zone. Sure. Oh boy. Oh yeah, but I was talking to Chris, so I don't know where Mike came from. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Green, white, British. <laughs> that is classic. Yeah, he had the. He was. Uh, he was holding the shift key. You can tell it was a shift, not a not a caps lock. Dan's, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Always good to see you. You want me to go back into coach and make Mark Rosewater watch you? Yes. Apparently, Kerwit is on the same flight as Mark Rosewater. I'm pretty sure I should have just... Uh, well, I guess... So the thing is, if we don't... If we put Gideon to... If we zero Gideon to make him a 4-4... Four, four, uh, I guess they don't really have great activations for this. We probably should just attack for 4 there. and That was a misplay. Okay, you got it. So you're going to get rid of two border posts and a Gideon. No. This seems very good. Let's see what we want to do. Let's liquid metal coating, huh? I don't really want to play another border post when they have their blast zone on three. So, although I am hoping they don't have rally smash to kill Karn because that makes our local middle coding awkward. Frank, we're gonna eat when I come to Florida. That's what I think. That's uh, that's what we're trying to figure out. That's the um, that's the question, isn't it? I feel like the sky's the limit. Six mana. Yep, that's what we we're afraid of. They overpay? That's interesting. Oh, they killed a Gideon. That's interesting. that I was not expecting uh, one target non-creature artifact you can... let's 
So now I can safely play this. But I don't an exile creature until it leaves the battlefield. Uh, what's his name? Reality. Reality Smashems. I mean, I don't, like we can block and save Karn again. Which, but they have double Ghost Quarter, so I'm not really super interested in. Plus, if we draw a Nick, though, so it's real good. Well, that's pretty fascinating. Oh, I'm gonna get by sick by coasted lattice. This card, this is just a, this combo is just ridiculous. Ensnaring bridge. Hmm. Fascinating. Wow, no attack again? What is even happening right now? Oh, we can't activate this anymore. That's really sad. We have Leyline in play too, that's pretty good. Um, so one non current, yeah. I mean, we're just gonna plus, I guess we're plusing Karn. My mom always brings in macaroni growing, that's that's actually pretty cute. That's pretty cute. One, two, three, four, five, but I don't want to go there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we don't have to go to Macaroni Grill. Okay, so next turn we're going to actually, we're just going to search out Nykthos and add a million mana. The only other thing we can get is Mycosynth Lattice, right? I don't think that's great. Until your next turn? Yeah, I'm just gonna make this an artifact. I'm gonna make this a 3 3. So now we at least have a blocker. So another hand is Ensnaring Bridge and one other card. It's not it's not the end of the world. Okay, now we know they have one card. I think this I think we actually I think this weathered wayfarer just You got it. <laughs> you got it. Well that's fascinating. How much mana is this? 10,000 mana? It's like 10,000 mana when I'll... I'm not even going to add it. I'm just going to find out. Oh, we can't activate these, huh? Oh, let's attack for... Oh, we can't attack and we can't activate this. Dear gosh. Oh, boy. How do we do this? We need one more land. We can get an Outback Blue and Onion. Oh, you're speaking my language. Oh, my God. What is even happening? How do I deal with this? How do we get a card back in their hand? I mean, we're making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana. Uh, do we have any options for this?
One target non-creature artifact. We're this be make this a three-three, but we can't really do anything to it, which is sad. Oh, we can just actually double attack. Car. No, we can't. When it's attack, attacking is not an option. This is complicated. What if they just could get Mycosynth Lattice? We have to kind of prevent that from happening, right? This is really confusing. For some reason, this is a very confusing situation. Oh, but then all our things aren't artifacts, so it doesn't really do anything, I guess. I guess we're just passing here. Let's go get our own Mycosynth Lattice. Get an Outback Blooming Onion. That's gas. All right. Well, all the cards on the field have modifiers on them. Like this can't be the target of spells or abilities by my opponents. Activated abilities can't be activated. This says artifacts can't be used. This says creatures can't attack. Like there's so many modifiers going on that it's like. This says I can't be the target of uh, things. So we're adding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 mana. If we get to untap with this, we add 11. It's a good amount. So it turns all your lands into artifacts, but it turns our lands into artifacts too. So it's kind of like, is that like a, that's like a stalemate? <laughs> no, because eventually they'll have enough cards in hand that they can't play that we get to, uh, that we get to attack. So that's interesting. Uh, I don't think banning Karner Lattice is really necessary just yet. Uh, so let's do this. Let's add 11. Activate this guy. Let's go Ugin. Thirteen, fourteen mana. So we can go Mycosynth Lattice. I think we're winning this game. Activated abilities can't be activated. So you literally have no lands. We have a Karn. We can get rid of your Ensnaring Bridge. We can exile your Ensnaring Bridge with this Karn right now. So, 
So my daughter had a slumber party for her 10th birthday last night with three friends that turned into a disaster. Long story short, one of the girls had to have her mom come get her at 3 a.m. And the other girls, and consequently my wife and I, weren't able to go to sleep until 4 a.m. Silver lining, lots of leftover pizzas. <laughs> Man, Little Caesars, the cost of these parties piles up so fast. Oh, yeah. Also, if you're having a 10th birthday party, those kids don't care about pizza. I mean, they probably care about pizza, but they're not like, they don't care about it in such a way that like, I think we just won the game. Because I'm trying to click OK, but I think a concession is happening. And it is, wow. What's creating the Stony Silence spec? Uh, Karn. Karn himself. So, yeah. This game's, this deck's not, not too bad. I, uh, oh, the same, the same player. Well, that's unfortunate. And we do not get to play first. But actually, it's probably better for us when we have double Knight of the White Orchid, right? Keep. Actually, it's only single Knight of the White Orchid, and the other card was a Thalia's Lancer. I just saw a guy on a a guy on a mount of some sort. It does seem almost shoehorned into a huge number of decks. That I mean, it's weird because it's like, yeah, I could play one Karn and one Mako Synthlass. I mean, it's just kind of like, it's kind of like twin uh, Kiki Jiki, right? Or twin uh, Pestermite, rather. You're just like, well, I can just stick this combo in every blue black and blue blue red deck. Yeah, it's a four mana planeswalker into a six mana artifact. And like I mean it's very it's it's not like it's uh it's not that hard to to deal with. Little Caesars is pretty good. I had a lot of that growing up, and Pizza Hut personal Pizza Hut personal pie. I used to love the Pizza Hut lunch buffet. I don't know if they still do that anymore, but that was a sweet uh deal no stick with personal pie personal pie is, is hot oh only if they control more lands than us oh I actually didn't I didn't know that my bad I heard you're planning a Magianos party without me. Wow, is that what you heard? I would never do that to you. That is insulting that you would think that. I'm totally doing that, maybe. Sure. You got it, Thotty. You got it. How does this deck cheat out the fatties with uh, Nykdos? Shrine to Nyx. What did they take? Well, wait, what did they take? Hmm. Oh, the Antonice, which makes sense. Uh, I really want to play another land because we don't have five mana, so I think we, I feel like we have to really exploit this. Why don't I play our land? Because I want to be able to play Knight of the White Orchid again. And if we play our land, then they're going to have to play two lands before Knight of the White Orchid does anything. So, whereas now we can play Knight of the White Orchid and get a fifth land. So. Ideally, we draw the other on thin ice. That would be great. Because I'm not sure how we deal with this idiot. Ruined Halo. Wait, what did they get? Oh, liquid metal coating. Sure.
thought not seer. So they block here, Karn goes to one. I don't know if that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna pass. Yeah, local metal coating's pretty obnoxious at being just a wasteland every turn. Yep. Little Caesars had a specialty product called Get Ready the Spaghetti Bucket. Yes, it was a bucket filled with spaghetti. The real mystery. Uh, Somebody touch my spaghetti! Is that in all the advertising material and videos I found the spaghetti bucket. Not one actually shows the spaghetti. So the question is, what was in those buckets? Wow. Oh boy. Land. Dahlia's Lancers. Another five drop when we have Dahlia's Lancers. Fascinating. This seems like a uh, what's known as a lost cause. This is going poorly, unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, I mean, one, two, three, four, five. We go one, two, five, six. We have six mana. We can play all. We can like if we if we happen to hit a Nykthos. Yeah, we're just going to concede here. We can't play lands fast enough. What up, Ben? Good seeing you, buddy. All right, let's try this again. Oriac champions, no bueno. Tomic, good. Actually, maybe Sunny Silence isn't great against them. Maybe we just bring in... It does shut off the Liquid Metal Coating, though. And it shuts off Expedition Maps. Danny, have a good night, buddy. Found a picture of the spaghetti bucket? No way. Oh, my God. How much spaghetti is that? That's got to be, like... That's ridiculous. This is the Border Post Brew. Sunny Silence is a weird uh, a weird sideboard choice when you have Fear of Most Border Posts in the deck. Like, it shuts off eight of your main deck cards. That doesn't seem great. Oh, because there's, oh, there's sauce and breadsticks in the same bucket? That's fantastic. See, that's just good marketing. Whatever, we'll submit like this. I don't like having, like, essentially 26 lands in the deck, but... <laughs> oh god, this 93 Little Caesars commercial. Oh god, I can't handle this. This is too much. Oh, snap keep.
Yeah, warship might not be bad actually. I could see taking out a a, a wildfire or like a border post for a for a warship. So if they play a land here, we can actually go knight, get a land, knight, get a land. I think. Maybe not. Yeah, mm, maybe not. No, I think it's going to be... Yeah, because then we play another land. I am tempted to on thin ice this guy though. Maybe. I don't think he does anything at this juncture. Yeah, that's what we figured they'd have, which is why I didn't want to play Anthony Ice, because then they would easily take the Thalia's Lancer. Now we have one of two options, so I'm okay with this. Yep. You basically have to take the removal or else you negate the entire point of, uh... yeah, I'll just block here. God, they always hit. They always hit a land. That's three, three out of three lands, I believe. So one, two, we can have four. Eh, I don't think that's great. I think I'd rather just, uh, think I'd rather just play Lancers here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So next turn we can play Nick those. And then we can go uh, one, two, six, seven, eight, nine. That seems pretty good. Is it Ugin, is it Karn, or is it Ulamog? So one, two, activate. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh boy. This is hard because like if we do get something like Ulamog, we can also just get eh, I don't wanna get I don't wanna get Elspeth because it's kind of probably we'll just get Ulamog. I think Ulamog is strong enough to <laughs> two pieces of chicken as the bread. Yeah, the KFC double down is really something else. That was a real uh It was something else, let's put it that way. Oh, the grilled double down. Yes. Two grilled pieces of chicken as your bread. <sighs> Exhausting. Okay. 
Well, now we either get to eat a Karn or a Thought Knot Seer, so that's not terrible. Border post or a land. Oh, the land actually doesn't do it. I don't know why I thought a land did it there. Um... I don't think we can play... N oh, wait, hold on. We can do that, can't we? Oh, that's very good. Because this actually nets us three mana, not two. Oh, that's gas. Um. So we also want to play Weathered Wayfair, right? Because we're going to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, that'll do. We can't activate these, so actually that doesn't work. Yeah. If we activate Nick, those, we'd only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can't actually play Wulong because of the border posts. Yep, that's frustrating. But we have a lot of pressure on board, and they actually have to play Mycos and Thlatis this turn. I don't think that really does much, so. <clears throat> They also have two towers, two mines, which is great for us. Dude, I forget the static walker's ability so frequently. Even like even when it's written on the card, it's still like not super obvious because I just it's kind of you're just kind of on autopilot most of the time because that's how magic works. I think if you were forced to think about every single interaction and every single ability like you would probably lose your mind so i think your your brain is almost forced to go into autopilot a lot of times when you're playing magic in terms of like what you like your in terms of your known information like there's so many times i'm just like wait oh yeah i can't do this because of your static ability it's so weird I feel like if they play Lattice here, they just lose. But I feel like if they don't do anything, uh, you know, against our... I guess they could, like, blow up our Nykthos, but... Then we blow up their Karn. And we still have Weathered Wayfair to get on the Nykthos, so... Yeah, this seems really not... Yeah, that's fine. Do you think walkers of static abilities were our mistake? I don't think they're a mistake yet. I just think they're they're really disturbing, if if that makes sense. Oh look, all my things are turned on again. So is that seven, eight, nine, ten? Doesn't matter. Yeah, get a tower. Disturbing in the sense that they are disruptive. Yeah, people forget about them. Like, oh, I forgot that was a thing. Um, I also think some of them are too game changing. Like, some of them dra like. Uh, all the ones that are played drastically change the way the game is played. Like, Narsets changes the way the game is played. Like, it makes cards in your deck actually invalid, which is just crazy. Like, if you have Divinations in your deck, if you have Jace's Ingenuity, you know, for example, just like your basic card draw cards. Like, 
a planeswalker like Narset literally just turns those cards off. It blanks cards in your deck, which is super weird. So if we talk with everything they block here, yeah, that doesn't seem great. What is Chalice then? I don't know what that means. What can you do? You can draw a card, you can deal a damage to a target, and you can make something not attack or block. Sure. Yeah, they shut down decks, but they're literally one card, not four separate Planeswalkers. Uh, they also have no other functional abilities. So, I mean, you're getting one card, not one card. If Blood Moon had two or three activated abilities attached to it, that's a completely different question. Plus, you're also talking about Modern versus Standard, which are two completely different formats. Like, that's not a, that's not a fair comparison at all. Plus, with Chalice, I'm like, okay, I could name one. And, like, in our, in our first match here, our opponent played Chalice on zero. It did nothing because they just chose poorly. And if they want to play Chalice on, like, two, it costs four. If they don't play it on one, it costs two mana. Like, you can still kill it with artifact removal. Like, whereas if you have a Planeswalker on board, I have to have direct damage or I have to be able to attack through into it. Like, there's no, you know, I guess I can, I, like, there's no, there's like Assassin's Trove. There's a very limited amount of removal in Standard to uh, to directly destroy a Planeswalker. Especially if it's like a Narset and you're not really even killing a card they're going to get value out of. They've already gotten the value out of it. They're 100% going to shut this guy down. Yeah, Chalice, like, if I play a Chalice, I get no other value out of it, and I have to hope that it shuts down your things. Whereas, like, if I play Narset, even if the, the uh, don't, you can only draw one card a turn clause is relevant, uh, or even if it's not relevant, you still get to draw two cards off of a Narset. So it's like, you know. Reality Smasher. Yeah, there's times where I have counter spells in hand, and I'm just like, all right, I'll just counter your thing. And then they're like, oh, I have, you have Tefri in play, and I can't actually cast these spells. And it's just extremely frustrating, because I feel like that shouldn't be... You shouldn't be able to invalidate an entire card type in my deck. It's so weird. See, like, here's a Chalice for one. It does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. This guy's obnoxious. I mean, we have a Karn and an Ugin in the deck that I'm really, I'm really looking forward to getting here. And three more Thalia's lieutenants, so. And one more on thin ice. Was that like f at least six outs that I can think of? Ruined Halo is a thing, I guess. I'm actually gonna say thought knots here. Because if they cast Thought Answer, I don't want them to actually take any cards from my hand. I didn't think it through. I'm too poor to ever own a Chalice. <laughs> no worries. This is just good conversation, though. And, uh, you know, like, if, yeah, if you look at the Nissa, like, you're the five mana. You're playing five mana to double your planes, right? Or forests. And look at a card like Dictate of Karametra, which was from, you know, Theros Block, where it's a five mana enchantment. It has Flash, so you put it into play. And that doubles the mana you produce, right? So, like, it's the same card, only Nyssa makes three threes and also has an ultimate ability. And these, these Planeswalkers, which are rares, not even mythics, 
are just upgraded versions of actual playable enchantments. Did they just make it so we can't block? Uh, well, I'm taking. I'm not taking three here. You can just draw your card, I guess. I think I should have taken three. Actually, I think that's probably the better play because, like, if it's just walking ballista, eh, that's pretty good, I guess. Okay, they make a walking ballista for two. I hope they do that. That would be great. Now they're doing it for one. Yep, that is correct. Come on, one time. Let me see that. Let me see that beautiful border post. Those are still drastically different. Yeah, but so are... Like, so is Chalice and Teferi, you know? Like, they're not the same. a lot of walking ballistas are they just going to double kill this guy and then I have a Ulamog yeah I'll just take three here this is a, this is a, we're at a point where I'm like I ain't I ain't dealing with this guy they don't have to be a, they don't have to be lock pieces that's not the relevant point the relevant point is these are cards that functionally change the way you play the game and it's true for both cards like, you're changing the goalposts. The goalpost isn't... It has to be a, a lock piece. Oh, that's pretty good. So, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Thalia's Lancer. I will use the ability of Thalia's Lancer. Uh, is Aleshnorn good here? Aleshnorn seems pretty good. I think we actually just want to get rid of Endbringer, though. So I think it's actually Karn Liberated. Kazugan can't do it. So let's just go 1, 2. I have no idea how much this is going to add. 13. Reasonable amount. Exile this beautiful gentleman. So yeah, but the thing is, like, if you're playing Blood Moon in Modern, you already know there's a Blood Moon, right? Like, you know Blood Moon is a, a relevant part of the metagame, right? So you bring in things like Abrupt Decay, or you, you search for basics. You can still play around a Blood Moon by searching basic lands. It's not like, oh no, my, played, my opponent played a Blood Moon in a format where decks run 12 fetch lands. I don't know what to do. You just search out basics. It's really easy to... It's really easy to play around if you know to do it. People get upset because they're not expecting Blood Moons or they're not preparing for it, and then they then they die. But, I mean, tr like, you know, statistically, y you can play around a Blood Moon, and also you can float mana in response to a Blood Moon and kill it. Yeah, Endbringer was making Ulamog unable to attack or block. But like, like I said, the point is that like if you play a Narset, even if the ability, even if the static ability does nothing, you're still like impul impulsing twice, which is extremely powerful. It's like if they made a Blood Moon that said tap this to like, you know, remove a counter. Like it comes into play with two counters and you can remove a counter to look at the top three cards of your deck and put a land into your hand or something. And you're just like, wow, that's really good. I think they've conceded because of, because of Bulamog.
Plus the other thing, yeah, and like and the other thing is like if you're playing a Blood Moon deck, you're having to to build your deck a specific way, mostly with more basic lands. Um, so you know it's limiting your deck construction, right? It's a deck it's a deck building constraint. Whereas like if you're just playing Narset, you're playing blue. I can just play Narset. Cool. Actually, Grand Abolisher doesn't seem that bad here. It's just a 2-2, but it also... Uh, it shuts off, like, Endbringer during their turn. It shuts off, like, Blast Zone. Is it Blast Zone? No, it's just Artifacts, Creation, and Enchantments. Sure. Leovold had color restrictions, but it was also a creature. So, like, the ways you can remove it are significantly higher. Whereas, like, Narset is, like, you know, permanent removal, like, Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy, or Burn. Those are your options. You can attack it. But usually if you're playing a card like Narset, you're usually able to control the creatures. So. I don't think I care about the Field of Ruin that much. My boyfriend got me a little on the veil for my birthday. I've only started playing Modern and only play Orzhov Eldrazi. Any, any recommended recommendations for her use? All I can think of is DS Bill. Uh, what's DS? Death Shadow. Um, one great use for Liliana is discarding things like Lingering Souls. That's one of my favorite interactions. Um, also, Smiting Helix is a good card to discard now. I think there's a lot of cool cards that you can that you can profitably discard with Liliana. I don't even know what Savage Summoning is. What is that card? I'm looking it up right now. Can't be countered. Next creature you cast. Um. Oh, an Infect? It, I think it's a little janky. Just because your mana is so constrained in that deck already. I'm actually going to run this guy out there because I want to make sure we hit land drops. Well, Veil of Summer does a completely different thing from Savage Summoning. Those are two totally different cards. Savage Summoning lets you play a creature at instant speed and give it a counter when you do. Knight. Nykthos. That's pretty good. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. We can add five mana next turn to play this Dahlia's Lancer. That's pretty okay. <laughs> Ley line of sanctity, my friend. Never lets you down. One, two. Add that white. If we play another one of these, we can add... So we can add eight total mana. I feel like we just Thalia's Lancer here and then just save the Nykthos for next turn, right? Although getting a Karn down when they have no pressure is pretty good. And we get to draw a card? No, we don't because it doesn't... It's, it's when it dies, right? Oh, when it leaves the battlefield? Oh, they can't target us because it's still... So we don't draw the card, and then we don't lose the card, so. Yeah, it makes sense. It's all coming together. Oh, that's sad. Wow, there's a lot of Nykthoses. Nick thighs, if you will. Oh, dude. Karn 
Some great creator is good. Gideon's fine. I think it's just the I think it's just Ugin here. And next turn we can add. Oh well, it depends on if they depends on what they do. I guess they do have Tron. Yikes! Eight mana. Oh boy. Oh Jesus. Wow, I thought we were doing great. Turns out we are not. A lot of yeah so they get blast on but they played the urza's mind so they can't even put the counters on this to get rid of this this turn that's pretty good well we needed one land to be able to play heliod Yep. Yeah, it's really hard to come back into the game after they all those dust 17 permanents of yours. Okay, I'm really tired of having to resize this after every game. This really shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> really shouldn't need resizing after every single match. It's kind of an unrealistic uh, requirement. Oh, okay. Yep, mulligan. Cool. Mulligan again. Okay, keep this hand. And put a Leshnorn and a Ley Line. Done. Put you into play. I hope we're playing against Burn. <laughs> Mute a Vault. And nothing else. Okay, not, not too shabby. Leeching sliver. What? Whenever a slurry control attacks, we lose a life. Sure. Menace. Okay. Draw something we can play. Alright. Whatever. Would have been tempted to not even play the Weathered Wayfarer, but... Uh, geez, this one... 
Get rid of the menace sliver. That guy seems a little more a little more offensive to me. Yeah, I would have also been tempted to not play land, but then again, if they don't play a third land, then I think we're just in, we're just in good shape as is. And they did play a land, so now we get to go get whatever we want. Oh, flying! All right, well. Don't be a lit and uh... watch all your content. You throw us wondering what you thought about the new non-rotating format, and if you think the gate shift deck would be. Uh, actually, I don't know if I don't know what what deck was would be a good invention for. To be quite honest, uh, I also think it's fine, but it's not gonna it's not gonna be a format that really has any kind of impact until rotation. Or uh, until not not on rotation, but uh, in a long for a long time into the future, like you're just not going to get any like it's just going to be standard with like one or two extra sets, which is not really super exciting. But they it's kind of a necessity because you have to give people um a thing to do with their um you know their things their 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 cards that it rotate right. You can't just they can't just have no no use you can't just give them nothing to do where it's like you know if on magic online you open packs and you have a bunch of bunch of cards that rotate at a standard like there's still formats you can play you can play commander you can play modern oh so there's have haste one two three we take six here all right well Heliod, do you even do anything? God. Next turn, if they just alpha, we die. It's pretty bad. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. I thought this was a great opening for a multi five, but but here we are. Can Leyline of Sanctity prevent them from attacking us? Is that a thing that I can do? That would be great. All the ground. This is a Billy Joel song. <laughs> I'm in danger. I mean, if we get to survive and also top deck a Thalia's Lancer, I don't see what can possibly go wrong. Oh, they had an extra land. I was really excited. I was like, oh my god, did they just give us one more turn? The answer, my friends, is no. Oh, and this guy has haste too, so we're, we're dead by several metrics here. Man. Jake P, otherwise known as Guardian Lynx, would have loved this. Loved this thrashing by... Uh, By the slivers deck. All right, so 
Mastery, eh, it doesn't do much. Warship's probably pretty good, I would imagine. Uh, rest in Peace, no, they don't care about Graveyards. Sunny Silence, don't care about that. Grand Abolisher, don't care about that. Tomic is decent because it's just a flyer. I'll take out one Orac Champion, one Border Post, and one other Border Post, I think. Even just going down to six Border Posts is pretty fine. Maybe we can cut one Ruined Halo because they're so varied. Actually, Pro Red and Black is pretty relevant against this deck. We can just go to six Border Posts. Let's try that. Ghost Quarter not bad for Vault? Oh, it's not bad. I feel like this isn't a deck that's... I don't know, man. I, I just... I don't know. It's too late now, but... All the dances in the ground I wish we had a basic land. Oh. Have a ley line. Yeah, all right, this is fine. We'll, we'll keep this. Well, let's get rid of this guy. But it's not just one site, though. Like, it's disingenuous to call it just one site. It's literally an aggregate of all the information, right? It's a site that is actually posting information from multiple events. So it's weird to just call it one site as if, like, it's... As if the site itself is providing the data, which it's not. Can't tell me about the same song stuck in my head for because of generational reasons, or are we watching for um it could be both. I'm trying to think of why it's stuck in my head right now. Like I'm trying to think of what the reason is that that this Billy Joel song is stuck in my head. I don't actually think I know what it is. If they don't play a land here, we're just going to have to borrow a Reckoner. That's rude. Like, because I feel like a lot of times the songs that get stuck in my head are relevant. Like, I'll, I'll, there's a card that'll rhyme with a lyric, or someone will say something in the chat, and it'll make me think of it. Because I'm just trying to think of what the trigger is. Mm -hmm. I can't think of it. Man, this one Boros Reckoner. Wait, what? Um You done messed up, hey, hey, Ron. That seemed bad. I mean, I'm no no Boros Rexpert, but that did not seem ideal.
Well, uh, they lose one life. Whenever a sliver controls a defending player loses one life, so that's not even targeted, so that's unfortunate. They have to play two lands for us to for us to get value out of this Knight of the White Orchid. Sadly, two leeching slivers. I guess we can just name leeching sliver too. Like, I guess we still take four though. Oh boy. If we could draw Nykthos, that'd be gas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jesus. <laughs> Add ten, eleven, so then we can play both of these. That'd be pretty good. Oh god. God. This card's really good. <laughs> like, I don't understand it. On the one hand, I'm also afraid to read the comments of the general internet in response to Thor Love and Thunder. On the other hand, that was a really, really well-received storyline by Jason Aaron. Uh, it's one of my favorite storylines. It was actually fantastic, and Jason Aaron is probably one of the best Thor writers that I've ever read. Nick those uh, Swamp. Are we dead? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can't believe we're just, like, we're so far ahead, but then we just die. I guess we'll play this on Leeching Sliver. So we still take the six, but we don't die. We go to we go to one. Well, female doctor is not canon, is the problem, right? Like that's that's people making a you're just batting a female doctor because you need representation and you're trying to be PC. Also, people like claiming social justice warrior um, against comic book stuff is like the most mind-blowingly idiotic thing I've ever heard. I'm just like, if you don't think that comics have a social justice warrior undertone, um, then I'm pretty sure you haven't actually read a comic book. What do you think Captain America's doing? What do you think Spider-Man is doing? <laughs> like, I, I can't actually comprehend how your how someone's head could be that 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 under the sand okay well all these things are happening that's kind of like a nick though except we'll never be able to activate them ever one two three four five six oh this is actually great right they, if they block they, if they block here they die so they have to block here and here so we get to kill one of these slivers oh yes oh so you're still dead right get him right but there was a whole storyline like the, the problem is people people taking issue with stuff like this is, is funny to me because it's like it is canon it's actually canon like there was a whole storyline where uh where thor was not thor because he wasn't worthy he was unworthy to be thor so he wasn't thor anymore and that's when jane foster took over so like i mean you know But then again, I'm pretty sure he's still going to be. I don't think that's the case. I don't know. That's why I'm really, I'm really, I'm really excited for it, though. I think it's going to be fantastic, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the transition. But I do love that Chris Hemsworth not only gets a fourth movie, uh, which is like the the most anyone has actually had. There's been four Thors, and there's only been three, like three Iron Man, three Captain America, three uh, Avengers, even no four Avengers. I guess there are four Avengers. But um. No, no, there's only three. There's only there's only two Hulk movies, right? There was the uh, there was the Ang Lee Hulk, which had uh, Eric Bana, and then there was the new Hulk. I for, I don't know who directed it, but uh, that had Edward Norton. Well, there's only a third Guardians, so I mean there could be a fourth Guardians, but I don't think we're even close to to announcing that. I'm talking about movies, though. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about people who played them. Like, there's three Iron Man movies, there's three Captain America movies, 
there's four Thor movies. So four, like Thor is actually the, um, the highest, the, the highest number of individual films, self-titled films, if you will. <sighs> Spooderman will have 69, right? Nice. Oh, dang it. No, there's only been Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and Volume 2. So the next one will be Volume 3, but that's also going to have um, Thor in it, I would imagine. And getting James Gunn back on Guardians and getting Taika Waititi back on Thor is just fantastic. Both of those are just absolutely fantastic. I'm also excited about the premise of Blade because Blade could mean that they're introducing more MC, like uh, Marvel Marvel Knights esque characters, uh, which means Moon Knight could be close behind. And I think I think Keanu Reeves is probably one of my favorite castings for Moon Knight. I think that's just a fantastic uh I think that'd be a great cast. Well, I think I think Taika Waititi and uh, the Russo brothers are two totally different directors as well, but I think they both have very very solid qualities. Well, there were like five movie announcements. The movie announcements were uh, Shang-Chi, Blade, The Eternals, Thor, Love and Thunder, Doctor Strange, and the Multiverse of Madness, and uh, Black Widow. So there were six six movie announcements. And that doesn't even count Captain Marvel 2, Black Panther 2, and... <laughs> I guess that's all I can think of. Honestly, that's eight. That's eight movies. And... Uh, Additionally, I, I I absolutely love that at the end of the panel for Comic Con that uh, that Kevin Feige mentioned Fantastic Four. He mentioned Fantastic Four. They are uh, they are being considered. Uh, what do we get out of this? One, two, activate. We get one, two, three, four, six mana, huh? One, two, activate. One, two, three, four, five. Five mana. So we can actually play Thalia's Lancers now, which is probably what we want to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So next turn we're going to be one, two, activate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Oh, yeah, we're just going to get an Ugin here. And we actually don't want to attack with Knight because if they throw another uh, another Sinew Sliver in the way and it's a 3-3, three, three, um, then we lose our Knight and we no longer have Ugin mana. So we actually just have to survive this turn. Oh, yeah, and I was, I was super stoked about the casting of Mahershala Ali. Like, Mahershala Ali is fantastic. That's like I, that's gonna be that's a fantastic blade. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. If they have, actually, we're dead, right? Fourteen, fifteen. Yep, I think we are just straight up dead here. Oh boy. 
I like this deck a lot. I just don't know. I feel like it's missing something. Now they just sack. They have exactly two mana, so they can sack two slivers. That yeah, seems good. Yep. I don't think I've seen a new article about new boosters and brawl stuff. All the slivers in your grand cafe. This deck is super interesting. I don't know how I feel about it though, but um, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna call it a three rounds because it's still an hour, already an hour and a half. These matches took a little longer, but the deck is sweet. I like it a lot. I think Wildfire Border Post is a bit of a, a liability. And I wonder if there's a better option, especially because there's so many Karns running rampant, and you know you just kind of open yourself up to things like Abrupt Decay or Karn. Stony Silence is even pretty good against you, and you have eight of them, as if your mana base had uh, eight, you know, artifact lands in it for just for just no real reason. Um, but you know, the reason is also because it's it's helping you, uh, it's helping you ramp with Knight of the White Orchid, but it's also helping you Nykthos as well, which is pretty nice. Um, Oriac Champion in the main deck is probably one of the few things I probably wouldn't keep because you already have four ley lines and I don't think you really need Oriac Champions. And I would much rather have something more proactive. Like I think even on the uh, more on the ice or more um, like something like Path to Exile would be good. But I think on the ice is actually better in this deck because you have um, Nykthos. However, it does open you up to things like Ghost Coder. So, you know, and, you know, Abrupt Decay, things like that. We didn't really face off against those cards, but still still, still worth considering. But, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on Manatraders.com. You can get 20% off for the first three months of any subscription if you use the promo code and the link in the description. If you guys are watching on Twitch, I'm not leaving. I'm just ending this YouTube video, and uh, you can also check me out at CoolStuffInc.com. I had an article about Dracu Seth go up this past week, so definitely check that out. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.